Hi, and welcome to The Forecast. I'm Alex Helmbrecht, and I'm joined here today with Daniel Binkert, as usual. A little bit of a, a different format today. I'm yeah. actually going to interview Daniel. So, Is this the hot seat, then? I think it is the hot oh, seat, man. so welcome to the hot seat. Uh, I don't think it's too hot. The lights here are, you know, the LEDs, so they're it's not It's nice. It's not, not like terrible. the old days when we'd get burned out. <laughs> yeah, the, the old studio... Uh, it used to be in the uh, the second floor of the Klein Center. It would get hot from time to time. It would get hot. It had the building's central air conditioning, so we couldn't control when the air noise would come on. And it had a tile floor, so the echo factor was even worse. I've got padding on the walls in here. That's kind of my ongoing process. Uh, uh, more and more sound control in this space. We've got a carpeted floor, but there, I can still hear an echo. Just now I can hear it. So I've got to get a little bit more padding. The, <laughs> it's a padded cell, really. <laughs> kind of uh, the not the telltale heart, but maybe the telltale echo. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so if any but of I our, don't feel that guilty. <laughs> if any of our dedicated listeners want to uh, uh, donate some soundproofing stuff, feel free to contact <laughs> Daniel yeah. Binkert here at CSC. So, yeah, that'll be made out to C A S H. <laughs> so, Daniel, we're going to talk about CSC Live today. It's uh, one of my we, favorite things to talk about. <laughs> absolutely. And one of the most uh, visible aspects of the college in just a short amount of time. So, uh, Daniel, give us a little bit of a, a history on CSC Live and what is it? Oh, yeah. Well, we go back a few years on this. 2012 was CSC Live proper. But even before that, uh, Alex, when you were the SID, you certainly know this. And uh, Alex knows a lot of this. We're just uh, telling telling all of you. But um, would that have been around 2010 that the initial stream started? Or it was might it even have, earlier? Yeah, it might have been even earlier than that. So uh, around that, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's been more than a decade now. Certainly. And we we started out, well, Alex started out. I helped a little bit. Dwayne Jimison in our office helped a little bit. Uh, it was just a single camera, and it had to be mounted on the roof of Miller Hall as opposed to on the football press box proper, uh, just the way the wiring and everything else was set up. So that they'd have to climb up the ladder to the roof, and we'd be dragging extension cords. We'd be dropping cables down into the, one of the third floor windows to go to uh, uh, the computer where, where it would stream out. Uh, had a radio, just a portable radio, yeah, pulling in the, which the was, broadcast. Which was the most frustrating thing yeah. uh, to get the radio feed, because usually we would just connect into the, the radio play-by-play um, -play board at the time. I think I can't yeah. remember the connection as uh, one of those bigger ones. But anyway, uh, we couldn't do that at the at, on Miller for the football stadium. So A little bit isolated. Yeah, so we basically connected to a boom box, yeah. and sometimes it would be supported basically by a pulley system. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, very bare bones, but it, it worked. I think one of the real annoying parts, you know, we just have a one camera, so it, you're trying to follow the general action. Close-ups are iffy because uh, it's easy to, to miss something. It wasn't centered on the field. It was off, what, around the 30-yard line, maybe the 20-yard line? Yeah, it was, it was in that 30 to 40 range yeah. Yeah, because we were limited by uh, the power source. Yep. And the uh, length of our cord. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was it was all stretched out there. Uh, then around 2012, uh, we had more discussions with uh, college leadership, and there was a big push to really improve the product that we were putting out for uh, primarily athletic streaming. So that summer of 2012, uh, I spent quite a bit of time shopping around, figuring out what equipment do we need to run multiple cameras, uh, get graphics on screen and all of that. And uh, bit by bit, we pieced together equipment. So we had switching equipment, uh, cameras. Uh, so we ended up with a three camera setup and then kind of a trial by fire, uh, getting that working. Uh, we hired student workers. We even had a broadcasting class that fall uh, taught by one of the former education professors, if I remember that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we had, and that's the big thing with CSC Live. It can't happen without student workers. We absolutely have to have them because it, it can't just be one staff member trying to run everything. Uh, I don't think the technology's gotten there quite yet. <laughs> but yeah, we can't we can't clone you. Uh, uh, we're still working on that, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, maybe ethically we could. I'm just not sure how we would pay two of you. That's so. true. <laughs> that would create a conundrum. <laughs> but uh, talk a little bit about student workers. How are how oh, are yeah. they the strength of CSC Live? 
Well, I mean, for every camera you put into a production, you have to have somebody running it. Uh, you have to have somebody running the video switcher, someone who picks which camera is going live at that moment. We've added a replay unit in the ensuing years, so somebody needs to run the replay unit and choose, uh, you know, showing the play right away after it happened or putting together the highlight clips for, for halftime and timeouts and that kind of thing. Um, the, the audio engineering is a big part of these productions, and it's good to have somebody not necessarily <clears throat> sitting there watching the board throughout the production, but kind of that. There, there's all those little extra jobs that go on in a production, and you, you kind of need to have somebody who can keep an eye on all those. So um, the setup we currently have is I'll be there for the majority of the events uh, just in the directorial capacity overseeing all the student workers doing things. And I'll do the training uh, before the games. During the games, we do training. After the games, we recap and say, what you know, what do we need to change or what was working really well about this production? So it's uh, you, you just can't do a full-on production without student workers. If, if we don't have them available, it comes back down to just one person running a camera, and that's that. So what are some of the skills they learn? I imagine it's a really great co-curricular setting. Oh, yeah. Um, we've had students come in with some video background. We've had students who, you know, they, they did uh, football filming in high school or they might have had media classes in high school. Uh, we've had them come in with absolutely no background at all. They might just have an interest in athletics or, you know, maybe they, they've got a bit of an interest in photography or video production uh, but haven't really had an opportunity to play around with it. So we, we'll, we'll take anybody who's got uh, at least some sort of a passion for the work and willing to be to, to have some dedication to it. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll train people up. Uh, train them on the cameras, train them on the switching equipment, the replay equipment. So they'll learn in terms of skills uh, the, how to operate a camera, how to set up a clean, cleanly composed shot, uh, how to adjust the aperture iris settings on the camera, the gain settings, what, why we adjust those and why we need to adjust those, uh, some of the, the color issues we deal with in various venues for white balance. Um, and following the action, you know, we've had students who come in not really familiar with a given sport, so they're learning the flow of that sport as well. And we go over that with them, uh, you know, say, all right, here's the kind of shot we want you to start out getting. And then as they get comfortable with that, training them, um, building on that foundation that they've learned. So you mentioned switching and replay. What are some of the jobs that, that students do? And, and maybe describe those to the, the, the common person who, who wouldn't sure. understand. I, I know what switching is because I've been involved with it. But what are, what are those jobs? What do they all entail? Yeah, the video switcher is... Uh, so all the cameras are wired to come into a central point, um, which is the video switcher. And somebody is operating that and saying, okay, uh, let's say camera one is the overall wide shot of, of the arena following the action. And that they'll switch to camera one and say, camera one, you're now live. And then cameras two and three are various close-up shots of the action. So at, at some point, we say, okay, we need to grab a close-up shot of this. You know, somebody, uh, somebody scored a point. We want to get the focus on them as they run back across the arena, hands in the air and that kind of thing. So camera two, you go to that person, switch to them. Camera two, you're now live. Uh, and then say, camera three, get ready for another shot over here of this thing. And then camera three, you're live. And then camera one, you're resetting to overall action again, switch to them. Camera one, you're now live. So that's the flow during a production. Real basically is camera one, you're live. Camera two, you're live. Back to camera one. We're always, uh, we contact the students through headsets, so they always know when they're live and when they're not live. And we're talking through like... Um, you know, that last shot was a little bit shaky. Let's try and smooth that action out or zoom out a little bit more so it'll be easier to follow. There's a lot of fine-tuning pieces that we do during the course of a game, especially as a student's getting comfortable with the operation. You know, at some point, it clicks for them, you know, partway through the season or maybe immediately. It, it all depends on the person. But you can kind of get that where they're, ah, they're comfortable with it now and they can do a lot of their shots just um, uh, w without having to be prompted. But we're always ready to support them, and, and we always try to keep it comfortable because it can be a stressful environment. You know, this is live. Sure. There's there's uh, not really a rehearsal process, so you're just there. And uh, the big thing I tell them is we expect to make mistakes. It's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, we make a mistake. 
we figure out what the fix is, fix it, and then we know that um, how to avoid that for the next time. Yeah, it's it's the best way to learn. Yeah. Uh, so the, there's switching, there's operating the camera, and then what's the replay system? What does that look like? So all the cameras also go into the replay system, and it's generally a three-camera setup for any given event. Um, but yeah, we'll have the three cameras going into the replay system and that's constantly recording all three of those cameras. So the replay operator can, uh, during the course of the event, just hit a button and say, isolate this portion of the recording, you know, maybe three seconds here or three seconds there or whatever. Uh, so if somebody makes a slam dunk, we boom, hit the button, we can go back and forth in our recording. So it, our timing can be as precise as we want it to be. Uh, we can essentially go back in time on the broadcast, which is the really cool part. So we can get the, the run up to the slam dunk and some celebration afterward if, if that's what we want to show. Uh, so those all those clips can be put in. They can be played back just one at a time instantly, or they can be put into a small playlist. So we get a timeout. We might have five or six clips that are real short, you know, scoring or a steal or whatever it might be, and uh, run those during our timeout. Uh, for football, we've, we've gotten to a point, you know, again, assuming we have enough student workers, that's always the key. But for football, we're at a point where uh, everybody gets comfortable enough. We can we can rerun the play immediately afterward. So we'd show the initial play on the wide camera to see everything. And then as long as one of the close-up cameras got the key moments of that play, we can, boom, show the replay of that and get the details. We can run it in slow motion, too. Oh, nice. So... It- Definitely takes a dedicated person to run the switching who, who's yeah. telling the basically serving as the de facto director. Yeah. And then another individual, most likely a student worker who's operating the replay and kind of knowing what the what the great play is. Then there's also the announcing. Oh yeah, the announcing's a big part. And I personally don't have a big background in sports, which is kind of those weird one of those weird things. Uh, but I, I kind of muddle through. But we've been uh, very fortunate since 2012. We've had great student commentators come through. Um, and, and I could name specific names, but I don't want to leave anybody out. But uh, I don't think there's ever really been a bad apple among the bunch. You, you come in as a commentator, you generally have a passion for mm-hmm. the sports. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I think they've all had a desire to do a really professional job at it. So I... I and I, I've certainly relied on you in the past to say, all right, what if, if we're talking about a specific sports-related, you know, uh, whatever the rules might be or, or, or talking about those aspects, because I, I can lean on you and certainly the students themselves. Yeah. They're going to have more knowledge of uh, the in, intricate details of the game than I will. They're, they're better at keeping up with that, so whereas I'm more on the back-end technology side. Mm-hmm. But one of the things I, I do feel comfortable talking to them about is uh, the cadence of their words, if they're mispronouncing something thing or if we want to change the order uh, of an introduction or that kind of thing and and just work on the flow of their commentary. Um, and it's easy to fall into traps when when you're in that live situation. And, you know, right now, if, if I start to overthink what I'm saying, I might fall apart. So you, you kind of got to get that comfort level. But if, uh, if they're putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable, <laughs> it might not even be consciously doing, you know, knowing yeah. that they're doing that. But, uh, you know, you let them know, let's, let's uh, try saying it this way instead. There's uh, certainly a knack to it. I, I've noticed when I've appeared on the radio before from time to time, uh, you're right. If you do overthink it, you're kind of yeah. stuck. And the worst thing that can happen is dead air. At least during CSC Live broadcast, you know, there's always the action going on and different yeah. things like that. But um, it's it's weird. You're kind of on an island as soon as that headset goes on and that mic, that yeah. mic test comes through. You're like, okay, well, here we go. The, That's the, right. The nice thing is, unless you say something really profoundly wrong or, um, you know, something like along that, those lines, no one really remembers what you say Two minutes, yep. two minutes later, you know, or even 20 seconds later. So yep, we're on to the next thing. Yeah, that's the, that's the aspect, one of the aspects of, of the student workers for CSC Live that I really appreciate uh, in my role because I get to see that improvement. I, I think a lot of times uh, there's a tendency to give student workers a job that, okay, you do A, you do B, you do C, then go back to A, do B, do C, and that's yeah. what you do. Uh, that's not necessarily the case with, with CSC Live. The more the more comfortable they become in whatever role they're going to do, you're going to give them the freedom to, oh, to move around and to do that stuff. Yeah. So it really engages the critical thinking aspect. Yeah, I tell them if they've got an idea for, you know, whether it's a camera coverage angle 
or what they want to talk about in the commentary on like, so yeah, let's, let's try it. Yeah. And let's, let's, let's discuss what this would entail. And if, if it, if it works, let's go for it. Well, and, and one thing that I've really noticed about, uh, you know, every generation of students is different, but one thing that I've really noticed, and we talked about it with, uh, Matt Evertson a few weeks ago on the, on the podcast, students love to create Yeah, that the students who are coming to us now, are, are digital natives. They understand this technology. They love to create, whether that's a five to 10 second Snapchat video or something on TikTok or whatever, They're, they love to create and you're yeah. giving them your, uh, the, the freedom to do that in a way, but they're going to be able to take those skills to their own personal life for their own benefit. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think the, certainly the camera handling skills that we train for, uh, it, it's better to have that clean, steady shot than something that's off kilter, shaky, or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, so while it, you know, basketball game is a basketball game, but they're getting some variety with all the, and you never know what's going to happen in a given game. Uh, so that being being able to think on your feet mm-hmm. and respond to something unexpected, yeah. while still for us we're having that support structure. They're not just on the camera with no backing. We're there on the headset. We can run out there, and if something goes wrong with the hardware, and like, wait a minute, why is it why is it gone uh, all blue or something? Yeah. we can run out and take a look and fix it. And, sure. and then hopefully, as long as they're paying attention to it, they'll know how to fix it the next time. Well, that's the great thing about live sports. You, you, everything's different. Yeah, There's never going to be the same outcome twice, and uh, so it kind of keeps you on your toes. Yeah, we've been rained on during softball games, been snowed on during football games. I'm hoping that we'll see how this coming season goes. Hopefully nothing really bad weather. Just I want good cloud cover, not too hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the reason, and even when I used to take photos, you want good cloud cover because it's better lighting. You have more yeah. even lighting. And One of those vagaries for uh, digital photos and video is highlights, they just get blown out to pure white so easily. And the technology's gotten better over the last 20 years. Uh, It's certainly night and day compared to what it was back in 2000. But um, I think you always had the trouble. You could go to the away games as the SID where they're wearing their white uniforms. And the high country of Colorado. Yeah, the high altitude, it gets even worse. And trying to hold those white highlights on the uniforms, oh, it's tough. And you get faces in shadow from the helmets. Yep. So we generally... uh, I'm trying to think what sports. If it's indoors, it's easier to control for lighting. At that point, we're just worried about it being too dark. Mm-hmm. But boy, outdoors with bright sunlight, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's really difficult. But uh, thankfully, every once in a while, a cloud would cover the sun. So I would at least get one yeah. usable photo. That's oh, yeah. all you ever need. <laughs> so we talked, we've mentioned sports, but what events does CSE Live cover, Daniel? Yeah, sports is the big thing. We do the graduation ceremonies at the end of each semester. And of course, that's when the students all leave for the semester too. So we're really scrambling, with, uh, trying to get you know who's who's still sticking around for the next few days that we can we can uh, borrow. Um, but that's the big thing. We've we've gone back and forth on music coverage, which uh, is generally just audio. But the music department did the Beethoven uh, Festival last year, and they've got three more events coming up this fall. So that one's also real limited video coverage uh, just because of the venue. But it is an opportunity to say, you know, it's, a, it's a, certainly a different animal than uh, action and sports. Uh, it's uh, somebody sitting playing a piano. It might be a soft and melodic piece. It might be something real vigorous. You, you know, Beethoven uh, certainly had his variety. And and for those who aren't aware of why some of those streams are audio only, could you speak oh, yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, the copyright law is the big thing for music. Um, you know, classical piece that's been in public domain for 100 years or more, uh, that's fair game. But uh, a lot of the music that's played is uh, currently under copyright and requires a specific license from the copyright holder for each song if you want to do it with video. Uh, the campus has a blanket agreement with the various rights holding um, agencies. I'm not sure if I'm using the right term there. but uh, So based on that, our, our understanding of that, the audio side is, is okay. So... Uh, and we're moving that toward being just a CSC radio. What are the call numbers for our station? Because I can never get them straight in my head. Oh, KJZC. K- yes. KJZC. Yes. ZC, our, that's our campus radio station. So we've provided essentially the sound engineering for them, and then they broadcast um, over the air locally and then uh, on their web stream. 
So that takes care uh, of it from our end. Yeah. Anytime you get into that uh, copyright, intellectual property, all that stuff. It, it's, it's a minefield. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's best to steer clear it, yeah. and do what we can. And I, I, I hope what I've said is I, I can't say that what I've said right now is completely accurate. So don't quote me on it <laughs> <laughs> as I get recorded. Uh, so, Daniel... You kind of mentioned you. You've alluded to it a couple times uh, with the video boards in the at um, Elliott Field and in the Chicoin uh, Center, and then as well as basically providing sound engineering for the campus radio station. Uh, just how supportive an entity of CSC Live is. That's also grown over the last decade. Uh, you yeah. know, obviously the video boards are, are the most recent uh, additions to campus in that regard, but. Yeah. Probably a bit of a learning curve on that stuff. Yeah, since 2018, we got uh, Dactronics um, st- type uh, video boards uh, at the big one at the football field, and then something slightly smaller uh, in the Chicoin Center. So we're able to provide a feed to those boards. Uh, somebody in athletics runs graphics, so they might have a touchdown graphic or a flag graphic, whatever it might be. Uh, but then they can pull in our live feed. And it really gets nice when the person running that board uh, is in sync with the flow of the game. Like for football, you know, as long as we're running our replay after each play, they're they're showing that live, and then they can show the replay as well from us as a close-up view. Um, <clears throat> for commencement, it's nice. It's one more way for people to see who's speaking at the lectern mm-hmm. uh, as a close-up shot. If they're sitting at the back of the house, that's, you know, they, they can still see who's down there a little bit better. Certainly. And you even added some theater performances during the pandemic, yeah, right? Yeah. So the, the theater department was able to get uh, permission from the rights holders. And again, it's rights holders for plays, just like for uh, musical compositions. They were able to get permission to do live streams of the four show, of the three, three of the shows that they put on last fall and spring. Mm-hmm. And I was providing consulting for them. So uh, theater was able to buy a few cameras and a small switcher, uh, get a computer set up to help run everything. And then I would go in there and talk about how how the lighting could be affected because uh, video cameras react to theater lighting a lot differently than how our eyes do. Uh, so that would, would be a factor and gave some suggestions on uh, what, essentially lowering the contrast of that lighting. Um, talking a little bit about sound design and, and they would be hanging microphones at various points on the stage to get uh, the ambient sounds of the play along with the dialogue. Um, you know, various camera angles that might be suitable, talking about how you ideally you'd want to have that overall wide shot and then, you know, one or two other cameras providing supporting close-ups. So get, kind of give them a springboard, a foundation to, to run that. Um, and then they had students that sat in the director's chair for the video side uh, talking to their camera operators through uh, walkie-talkie headsets and Kind of the same as what we do for an athletic production. That's great. That's great. Um, so who sees these broadcasts? It's generally going to be the parents of the visiting team. <laughs> Which I, I think that's going to be the majority. And I, I haven't looked a lot at the um, the geographic locations. We we try to track analytics for our viewership just to get an idea, you know, how many, how many unique connections did an event have? Um, you know, we don't, <clears throat> we certainly don't know who's, who's watching down to the name and all that. Sure. That would be a little bit too invasive. <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> yeah. But we, we get an idea of, you know, where is a connection coming from? If it's a team from South Dakota visiting, we would generally see an uptick in South Dakota connections for that stream. So, um, yeah, the visiting team, their family, friends, all that. And then a lot of the CSC home players, you get a lot of their family and friends. If they can't come down for the game, they're seeing it. And then just, you know, fans of the college, sure. you, you got to have that. Did you notice a rise in viewership during the pandemic? You know, it was, <clears throat> excuse me, it was, I've got my stats here and it's kind of hard to say, was there, if there was a raise or not, because of how, how different the number of events were. With, sure. We had, we had constantly had games that would get postponed or outright canceled if, if there was a, a COVID concern. So if I'm, we've, what I can say is we've had a rise in viewer numbers over the last uh, nine, 10 years where Let's see here. If I start from, say, the 2015 season, where it was almost 10,000 total unique connections. Now, that's not number of viewers, but unique connections. Mm -hmm. So it might be an entire household watching. It might be just one person watching on their phone. We don't know down to that level. But about 10,000 unique. 
The next year was 13,000. The next year was 15,000 and then 18,000. Uh, and then 2019 and 20, we were still around 18,000, but that was also accounting for not really having a spring season mm. in 2020. And then the 2020, 2021 season was just under 12,000. So definitely had a drop there, but I think I was anticipating that yeah. just with a uh, limited number of events. Yeah. It was one football game in the fall and one scrimmage in the spring. Football's our biggest draw for viewers. If I look at, uh, let's see what the stats are. I don't want to go too much into numbers because, you know, it's, it's, it gets kind of mind numbing. <clears throat> but for football, uh, average hits, um, not, not necessarily total. For football, back in 2015, it was about 650, then up to 800, then 1,100, then 17, almost 1,800, uh, and then a little bit of a drop down to 1,100, <clears throat> and then about 1,000 for the last year. Well, that's really interesting. So do, I, I guess within the last decade, I mean, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth, not only uh, with, with what CSC Live covers, but what it can provide the viewer and, and as well as the, the in-game experience by, by with the, the video board and assistance like that. Yeah. Um, but what do, you, what do you think the future holds? I mean, as people become more and more comfortable with streaming options, this is, you know, this is an easy thing. You can download an app, you can watch it on your smart TV oh, yeah. or on your computer or whatever. But what, what do you think the future holds for CSC Live? Well, I certainly want to try and hold the level of quality that we've established because I think we've we, we get to a point where once the students are comfortable in a given season, the camera work is really solid, and that's the baseline I want to hold. That um, if you're if you're tuning in or streaming in to watch the stream, um, you're not going to see a bunch of shaky camera work or that the, the horizon is tilted or anything like that. I want a, I want a very clean presentation, and even down to the scoreboard graphics. I do a very minimalist style for the scoreboard graphics because I want them to provi provide information and then get out of the way. Um, so maintaining that's been my biggest thing, you know, especially if, if we're dealing with budget uncertainties in a given year, uh, that's always going to be, or if there's simply not enough students for a given year, I mean, that really affects it because if, if I want to run three cameras for a game with replay, I got to have at least, what is that? Four or five student workers to make that happen. Um, and if they're not available that at that time, or if we just don't have that many in a given semester, then well, we're down to fewer cameras and less coverage. Mm -hmm. we, we, do, uh, we do try and we basically have to cover all of the home football, volleyball, and basketball events. And then we also do wrestling and softball. Uh, so we don't want to miss any of those events, you know, one way or another, whether it's one camera or multiple, we, we get that done. Uh, I think the big, the big hope is uh, that we have uh, at some point a broadcasting major uh, through the communication program, because that would be the draw to have students coming into the college to get the, the full academic background with it and have an opportunity to train in our real world situation with CSC Live. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, that'd be a great partnership. Yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I, I've heard rumblings and hopefully we'll see something uh, uh, real concrete appear, but uh, that that's big hope. Uh, you know, just trying to keep on, on top of uh, equipment improvements too. As cameras get better at dealing with low light situations. Well, I certainly commend all the, the wonderful work that you've done with CSC Live and uh, can't forget your student workers as well. So I, you do a great job of, of really showcasing the college to the public and um, just keep it up. I, I, I guess I, I, we, before we end, got to give a plug. If you're a student looking yeah. for a job, check out in. CSC Live. <laughs> It'll uh, be good. <laughs> get in touch with Daniel or uh, use the, the hiring form, I believe, on this uh, CSC. Yep. Uh, CSC. E oh, we'll put it. Yeah, there it is right there on screen. Yeah, we can go put there. It, yeah, that's right. We and have again, technology. You don't have to have a big background in this. You can be, um, if you've got an interest in it, that's the big thing. Because we do training. I, I don't send anybody off to say, All right, run the camera with, with no background on it. We, we really want them to be comfortable yeah. when they get out there for an event. So, uh, but yeah, um, like I said, I've had people come in with, with some background and without some background. And either way, we're, we work with them to get them ready. Well, you're a great guy to work with, and I certainly appreciate all that you do for the college. So thank you, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. Yeah, and if uh, anyone listening needs more info on CSE Live, go to shatterstate.tv. That's right. Easy to remember. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you.